What's going on everybody? Welcome to the latest and greatest series here on Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today is episode one of the Weber Kettle series brought to you by Fogo Charcoal. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I like to build my own pits, like this smoker behind me, the mini chud box, direct heat cooker, my own charcoal grill. But due to the fact that I still have about 80 pits to build before I can open up new orders, I'm very aware of the fact that there's a lot more people with Weber kettles than there are chud pits. Thus, the Weber kettle series, where we're gonna do everything from steaks to brisket and sausages, and really explore what we can do on a Weber kettle to help spread the good word of barbecue to a wider audience. But before we get cooking, I need to get myself a Weber kettle. Yeah. Ooh, nice and shiny. Ash bucket. There it is. Couple of wheels, couple of legs, couple of grates. What is that for? Me. Step one. We're gonna get our ash collector put together. On this piece, you'll see a big slit right here, and that's where this goes through to control your ash removal and also air intake. On to that, and then there's three different tabs that line up with these three little leg posts. And we should be able to just snap it in. Beautiful, so easy. Perfect. Next up, on the longest of the three shafts, we're gonna take one of these little brackets and put it right into the end. Beautiful. And then this leg goes on the side with the handle. Beautiful. Same deal on the other legs. And there's two holes on these legs, and that is because these are bent at the ends. So the left leg goes in the left hole, right leg goes in the right hole to make these two inner guys face each other. Next up, this guy goes in, hooks right on into this little hole right now, and then through the other two legs. Wheels on, end caps on. Oh, look at that, a nice little plug for this end as well. Otherwise that tube would just dig into the dirt. Handy dandy ash removal bucket. a great little cooker. It's rare to see one this clean, but at its core, this is a charcoal grill. So I'm like a stick burner. We're not throwing full logs into this thing. This is a charcoal cooker through and through, maybe with the addition of wood chunks or wood chips here and there. And because of the size and design of this thing, you can do hot and fast grilling, two zone heat, as well as indirect cooking, which makes it great for brisket and ribs and pork butts and things like that. Speaking of charcoal, you know I'm on Team Fogo, and they give us two options, which is the premium lump charcoal and the super premium lump charcoal. And the main difference is the size. The yellow bag is gonna be big chunks, and the black bag is gonna be smaller chunks, which is a great option to have. On something like the mini chud box here, super premium is perfect, because I can throw these big chunks in just as if they were logs of wood. They're gonna ignite really fast, really great for a direct heat cooker. But on something like this, where there's only a four or five inch difference between the coal grate and the cooking grate, the smaller stuff is gonna be the way to go. When it comes to Lighting your charcoal for a Weber kettle, you got several options. Starting with a charcoal chimney. This is probably your best bet for getting perfectly lit coal every single time. Because of the design, you light it at the bottom and it burns upward, so you know that every piece of charcoal is lit before you dump it into the Weber kettle. Giving you really consistent results, which is great for a beginner, but it's an extra accessory to have around. You have to have a place to burn it, and there are other ways to get around it, such as Fire starters, these things are great. It's basically straw or wood or something like that bound together with wax that burns really hot, really efficiently, and gets your coal started immediately. So you can just dump your coal into the Weber, throw a couple of these in there, light them up, give it 15 minutes, and you've got a raging coal bed. The only problem is you're lighting the batch of charcoal in various different points, as opposed to a charcoal chimney where you're lighting the whole thing at once, so it might take a little longer to get even consistent heat all the way across, but is definitely a fantastic option. But you can also make your own fire starters really easily. Just take some paper, put a little oil on there, crumple it up, stick it in the coals, light it, you're pretty much gonna get the same results. The one problem I have with using paper or these little guys is that oftentimes the coals will kind of fall and dampen out the flames, but there's a way around that. This is called a blazer ball. And basically it's a little metal cage that you can put your little fire starter in, light it up, and that way if logs or charcoal fall on it, it's not gonna dampen the flame. But probably the most fun and efficient way to get your fire started is with a blowtorch. You can pick these up at any hardware store. These work well, but it's a pretty small flame, but luckily there's a way around it. 
This is the grill gun. This thing is great because it's got an extended barrel on it, meaning you can be far away from your charcoal when firing it up, which is a great thing because oftentimes when you're lighting charcoal, it can spit and spatter and hit you with sparks. So having that extra distance is very nice, but this is a really big unit. It's pretty bulky, kind of hard to store. They do make a shorter one called the sous vide gun, but I don't have one of those. This is another option. This one works really well because it sits right on the canister. And this is great because you can set it right on your grates. Having this tip aimed at your charcoal, just kind of walk away for a few minutes, come back and it's well lit. But unlike the grill gun, it's not really all that powerful. But it gets the job done. And although I don't have the sous vide gun, I do have the Sear Pro. And this is probably my favorite way to get fires started, just because it is the smallest footprint with the maximum power. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. It lives under this table at all times. But enough talking. Let's fire this thing up. By the way, there's a little hook right in here. Well, that's right into the side. Super convenient. Another pro move, get yourself a mini leaf blower. Nothing gets a fire starter faster than that. You're gonna waste less propane, and especially if you're using a little fire starter, get it lit in one spot, and this will take care of the rest. In order to control temperatures on a Weber kettle, you got two options. You got the air intake on the bottom, which also acts as your ash deposit, and you also have the exhaust on top. Very simple design. And because we're cooking with coal instead of wood, the whole dirty smoke debate doesn't really apply to the Weber kettle. So checking off your air supply is not an issue, and balancing that pressure of intake versus outtake is the way to control temperature inside the pit. So if you have everything wide open, maximum air coming in, maximum air coming out, that's how you're gonna get your hottest fire, and if you choke off one or the other or both, that's what's gonna bring the temperature down. Another thing to note is that the exhaust is on one side, and that the the thermometer is on the other, which is kind of the biggest flaw of this design. Because in a perfect world, you want your thermometer above your meat. That way you know what temperature your meat is cooking at. Because if you flipped it around and the thermometer was on top of the coals, that'd be a much higher reading and not very useful, especially if you're cooking indirect. But at the same time, you also want your exhaust on the opposite side of your coals. That way the heat and smoke carries over the meat instead of just shooting straight out. So something to keep in mind. Well, I'm not just gonna light all this charcoal and not cook something on it. Something about cooking a New York strip on a Weber kettle just brings me right back to my childhood. So nostalgic. Ooh. Ooh. Nothing beats a classic charcoal grilled steak. Am I right? Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. So good. Nothing wrong with that. No. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to get a Weber kettle set up and ready for a summer full of grilling. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook on this thing. Big shout out to Fogo Charcoal. Thank you for sponsoring this series. And until the next time we see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.